Good day. This is Russell J. Hawley coming to you from the Tate Geological Museum at Casper College in Wyoming. And today I'm going to be talking to you about temnospondyls. Now you can be forgiven for not recognizing the name temnospondyls because there aren't any more. They're extinct, but they have left a, uh, left a rich fossil record and we can learn quite a bit about them from studying their bones. So what were temnospondyls? They uh, had four legs and they lived mostly in the water, but they were capable of crawling out onto the land as well. And they laid their eggs in the water. The eggs would hatch into little gill breathing larvae, but eventually those larvae would develop lungs, lose the gills, and then they themselves develop the ability to crawl out onto the land and breathe air. Now, uh, one beautiful specimen right down here is a temnospondyl called sclerocephalus, and it uh, is from Oldenheim in Germany. And in life, this would have looked pretty much like an overgrown salamander. Most temnospondyls seem to have been covered with smooth, slimy skin, much like a modern salamander or frog. And uh, sclerocephalus has rather short arms and legs. And that also indicates that it probably wasn't spending a whole lot of time on land. It was probably living mostly in the water. It was also finding its food in the water. And the way that we know this is kind of cool. Inside of the rib cage, right about here, are little black diamond-shaped scales and fin spines from an ancient fish. So this particular sclerocephalus ate and swallowed a fish and then died with its last meal still in its stomach. And that's pretty cool for once we don't have to guess at what these things were eating. Now, sclerocephalus is uh, pretty big. If you saw this today, you would undoubtedly say, wow, that is one huge salamander. But the biggest temnospondyls got quite a bit larger than this. Right behind me, up on top of this display case, is a cast of the skull of a very large temnospondyl from the Triassic period called Butaneria. Our model maker, Jim Copen, made a model of a temnospondyl skeleton out of uh, wood, the right size, to fit that skull. So that is about how big the complete Butaneria would have been. So picture a salamander blown up to the size of a small alligator, and you've got a good idea of what Butaneria was like in life. Incidentally, it's important to remember that the dinosaurs of the Triassic period, especially the ones here in Wyoming, were only about the size of cats or maybe small dogs. Butanaria's eyes are on top of its head, like the eyes of a crocodile. That, in combination with the very flat skull, suggests that it might have hidden under the water and grabbed at things that came down to the water's edge to get a drink, including small dinosaurs. So although this is a temnospondyl, it would have been one of the top predators in its environment. Now, relatives of the temnospondyls went on to give rise to two major groups of four-legged uh, creatures. One of those groups adapted well to life on land. Those eventually gave rise to the reptiles and ultimately birds and mammals. The other branch, however, stayed tied to the water by laying soft eggs in the water that hatched out into water-breathing tadpoles with gills. Those are still with us today. I'm talking, of course, about amphibians. The most familiar of the amphibians of today are the frogs, and they have a fossil record that extends all the way back to the Triassic period. This is a fossil frog from South America dating from the Cretaceous period, and it was just a tiny little thing, only about the size of a modern spring peeper. But, as is the case with many other creatures in the fossil record, um, specimens larger than any that you'll find living in the world today can be found in the ancient past. In the case of the frogs, there's a giant species from Madagascar called Beelzebufo infernalis. 
which loosely translates as the devil toad from hell. Now, this is the drawing that uh, appeared in the Journal of Vertebrate Paleontology when the article about Beals of Bufo was published. But just for fun, I decided to blow this up on the photocopier until it was life size. The result is down here on the floor. So Beelzebufo was uh, much larger than other frogs and toads that we know of in the fossil record, and indeed bigger than any frog or toad in the world today. And it's been suggested that it could have even fed on baby dinosaurs.